Good evening, everyone. I hope uh, all of you are in good health. Uh, so I'm going live to uh, discuss some new changes that is uh, in MRCPCH clinical exam we are facing uh, now in COVID situation. So this is the leaflet uh, published by RCPCH in the year 2020-20. So this is MRCPCH COVID adapted clinical exam. Let us see what are the changes happened. So previously there were 10 stations, as we know, now there are nine stations. One short clinical station that is converted to uh, extended clinical now. So there are three clinical station now. Two will be as usual short clinical and one is uh, the extended clinical station that is 23 minutes and there is another developmental station. So as we all know that in MRCPCH, History taking and communication uh, is not a problem in distant, uh, distal, remote exam, but the problem is in the clinical exam that you need a patient. So there are new technique, uh, uh, they are applied here. Now, during the clinical exams technique, that is the short clinical station, you will be given a virtual scenario. Before the station, there'll be a, a short period of time, like three or four minutes that you will be given a universal cue. That universal cue will contain the complaint of the patient, like this patient may have heart murmur, please uh, examine the child, or this patient has difficulty in walking, please examine the child. So this will be the command, this is the universal cue. And uh, after that universal cue, when you enter the station, your station started, and after a inspection of the patient, you will do palpation, uh, according to the station. So how I will tell the examiner that I am going to uh, see this thing. So in the, in the examination, uh, in the virtual exam, everything you have to verbally express. Previously, when the patient was face to face, uh, we, what we did, we uh, demonstrate the technique uh, by our hands or by our body language, body movement, but now this is not possible. Uh, so uh, we have to demonstrate what we are doing. So I will tell like that. I would look at muscle bulk and compare both sides, looking to see if there is any wasting on either side of the body or not. Then I'll look at the examiner. I'll give one second pause. Examiner will tell us, no, there is nothing problem in the muscle bulk. Or yes, the right side has hypertrophy or the right side has atrophy muscle bulk is atrophied. So this is a dependent cue. If I want to see the muscle bulk, examiner will give me the answer. If I don't want to see the muscle bulk, examiner will not say anything because this is a dependent cue. So I will not ask examiner, is muscle bulk normal? No, this is not the technique. I will say, I would like to see the bulk of the muscle and compare on the both sides. Then the examiner will give me the cue. Okay, so in each station, when the candidate are describing the process, that means it is a, actually it is a verbal exam. So you have to demonstrate everything, what you are doing. Okay, so the examiner in the station will provide a cue at key point to help build up a clinical picture. So the sign that candidate want to elicit, examiner will tell us. Suppose if I am going to do the, jerk, that is reflex test, then I will uh, say the examiner that I would like to test the lower limb reflexes with a tendon hammer. First of all, I'll do the both knee jerk, then I'll do the both ankle jerk, and then plantar reflex. So if the candidate say I would test the lower limb reflex with a tendon hammer, the examiner would deliver a cue that the reflexes are brisk on the left side. If you don't use the tendon hammer, examiner will not give you the cue. Okay, this is number one. And number two, I will not ask examiner, is the reflexes jar, is the reflexes exaggerated or not? I will not ask. I will do the procedure. Examiner will give me the cue. All right. So this is what, what why this is important in this clinical uh, technique. The important is that 
when you are, I am examining any patient, the structure of my examination, the systemic manner of my examination, the demonstrate, demonstration of the good technique, okay, and how I can diagnose by a sign and clinical judgment. These are the uh, area that I will give in the mark, okay? So we have to remember that this is a systemic examination approach. I cannot go haphazard. Like before inspection, I cannot start palpation. And after all auscultation, I cannot go back to inspection. That means in during any clinical examination, any clinical station, I have to go in a systemic manner. Like first of all, I have to start the inspection. Then I have to go with the palpation, then with the percussion or auscultation. Now some station may not have percussion may not have auscultation like MSK or neurology. They do not have percussion or auscultation like that. So that station, you have to follow the procedure like Pegals for MSK station, okay? And for neurology, we do uh, motor sensory uh, gauge examination. So this is the neurology. So according to the system, we have to adapt ourselves with the systemic approach. And what do you mean by good exam technique, good demonstration technique? When you are demonstrating a technique, like I want to see the H shape movement for the muscle, extraocular muscles, uh, or I want to see the tosses, how, the, how you see the tosses. I want to do the color vision test. I want to do the visual acuity test. How we will do the test. This is a good technique. So you have to practice daily for adapting this good technique and you have to verbalize yourself how you will uh, tell examiner that this is the technique of eliciting muscle bulk or jerk. Now, when you see any sign, when examiner tells you about the sign that is dependent Q, you have the ability to diagnose, is it a upper motor neuron lesion or a lower motor neuron lesion? Now, this is a consolidation of the lungs or collapse of the lungs. So this is the diagnostic ability. By seeing the sign, you have to have the ability of diagnose a child. And then judgment. So use your clinical sign and tell the differential diagnosis. Use your judgment. Okay, after everything, so in the clinical examination, the technique has the central important role. So I would advise you, please see the YouTube videos for each and every technique, like how I will see the muscle bulk, how I will see the jerk, how I will see the auscultation of the lungs or auscultation of the heart. Now this book is not our syllabus for clinical exam, but it showed us the level of technique the level of expertise and we have to remember that in any clinical examination okay what we are saying to the examiner or what we are doing that reflects our daily practice so if we don't do daily practice our voice will be shaky our hands will be shaky when we cannot demonstrate properly we cannot tell properly now so a valid clinical exam reflects everyday clinical practice. So for a good clinical examination, you have to practice daily each and every system, starting from neurology to the MSK, okay? Now this booklet uh, is uh, made for this uh, standard practice. And uh, this presentation uh, or technique will be uh, uh, very much popular, very much familiar with the, with the examiner and also with the candidates. Okay, examiner will expect you to do that. And as a good candidate, I should demonstrate my ability to verbalize how I will do this technique. So this is the introduction of the MRCPCH COVID adapted clinical examination technique. Now, we know we have three short, uh, three clinical station now. Two is short clinical, that is nine minutes, and one is extended clinical, that is 23 minutes. So candidate will have six minutes to undertake the task. That means you are examining the patient, but it is a verbal, and it is a verbal examination, virtual platform, and three minute discussion with the examiner. So what are the short stations we can find? That is cardiovascular station, neurological station. Now these two stations are almost fixed. 
okay and msk stations respiratory abdominal gastrointestinal ophthalmological dermatological hemato and hematological and hepatological these are optional stations these may or may not be present in the clinical exam also growth and nutrition it is a part of endocrine system and nephrology and some syndrome now we have to be very familiar with the clinical syndrome that we see daily like down syndrome turner syndrome klinefelter syndrome marfan syndromes these syndromes we are dealing almost daily so we have to be familiar with these syndromes so before entering the station examiner will explain the task to the candidate that is three or four minutes i will get time and this time i should not waste I should be prepared. I should have preparation in my mind that this is a cardiovascular station or this is a MSK station. So I should prepare for the good approach, systemic approach like inspection, palpation, percussion, and then auscultation. After finishing my station, I would like to do some relevant examination. Interpret the signs. So what sign, whatever sign examiner told you, because this is a dependent cue, examiner gave you the cue. According to those clinical sign, you have to come to a diagnosis. Even if you do not know the diagnosis, you have to tell a broad term, like I can find it is a upper motor neuron lesion, or I can find there is a, there is a problem in the right lung. Okay, it can be a collapse, can be a consolidation. Even if you don't understand, you have to reach a broad platform that I know there is a pathology in the right side, I can assume this is a upper motor neuron sign or this is the lower motor neuron sign. So you have to interpret the signs that you already, you are given the cues. And then you have to discuss with the differential diagnosis and management plan. So this is how the examiner will pass three minutes with you. The interpretation of the clinical signs and then discussion with the differential and management. So before entering the station, examiner will tell you a brief history, and that is the universal cue. This brief history can be a heart murmur, like this child have a heart murmur, please examine the child. Or this child has difficulty in walking, please examine the lower limb of the child. Now, when, this, when we will be given a broad terminology, like difficulty in walking, it can be a case of MSK, it can be a case of neurology. So before starting the station, you have to elicit the gate and you have to know is it antalgic gate or it is a Trendelenburg gate or it is an ataxic gate because if it is an ataxic gate mostly the child is neurological problem but if it is a painful gate antalgic gate mostly the child has msk problem if there is a scoliosis mostly the child has uh, msk problem so we have to know before starting the station we have to know what is the system that i am going to look at so some system before entering the hall, you can know like cardiovascular or respiratory or abdomen, but some system you may not know until you enter the station like MSK or neurology. Difficulty in walking can be presented both in MSK station and in neurological station, okay? Now examiner will see in the six minute when I am verbalizing everything, examiner will see, am I systemic or not? I am doing the full approach or not? Suppose in the auscultation of the heart, there are four components, but I have told two components. I have only told about the murmur and the uh, ronchi or crepitation. I did not tell about the first heart sound, second heart sound. This is half approach. So am I doing the full approach on a particular station? Okay, how much confidently I am talking? If I'm shaky, I don't know. After inspection, there is a palpation. After palpation, there is an auscultation. So I will be very shaky. So examiner will examiner will see your uh, systemic technique, your full approach, and your confidence of talking. And in face to face, uh, uh, your confidence about the uh, your examination technique. So this will be very easy for the candidates who practice regularly. But it will be very difficult for the candidates who are not practicing regularly. So some cases will be without any clinical sign, like this patient presented in the community clinic with unable to walk. Please examine the child. It is a 16 month old child. What is the cause of 16 month old child unable to walk? It can be transient synovitis. 
It can be osteomyelitis. These are MSK station, but it can be a cerebral palsy child because he came from a community clinic. It can be a cerebral palsy child, okay? Or it can be a Duchenne muscular dystrophy. These are neurological stations, okay? He came from a community clinic. So you have to prepare that this child came from a community clinic. Mostly they are neurological case or neurodevelopmental delay child, but you should not be so confident. You have to think that maybe this child has transient synovitis because in community pediatrics, some child present with transient synovitis. So when you enter the station, then only you know, is it a musculoskeletal station or it is a neurological station. And then in your brain, you have to have a structured approach that this is a neurological exam. So I have to do sensory nerve. I have to do motor nerve. I have to see the gait. Okay, this is a neurological station. You cannot mix the neurology with the MSK station. So if you find any uh, abnormal point, examiner will tell you that this is the abnormal point. This is the abnormality in this child. But if you don't find any abnormal sign, that is also you have to say the examiner that I did not find this finding in this child. Okay, so that is also absence of a clinical sign. That is also significant some station. Now, when you are proceeding to a physical examination, first of all, uh, I have to mention the features that are, that are presented to this child by looking the general observation of the child. So during any station, I have some general observation. What are those general observation? Now, let us see. So when you enter any station, first of all, I wash my hand, this is W, then I introduce myself, this is I, then I take permission from the mother or father or the caretaker, then I expose the child, this is the E, and then I make some rapport with the child during exposure, this is the R. So during any station, this is the primary thing, five thing I have to do. So wash my hand. In this virtual exam, I have to tell the examiner that I want to wash my hands properly. And then I will introduce myself, like I'm Dr. Tamanna, one of the candidates of today's examination. I have given the task to see your child. Can I see? This is the permission. Then, how are you, John? So I hope you are fine. So you are looking great, John, today. So, uh, John, can you tell me how, how about your school, if the child is school going? So this is the rapport you are uh, doing. At the same time, in a small child, you have to take permission from the mother that, mom, can I see the chest of the child or can I see the abdomen? Mom will say yes. So you will expose the child. But in a big child, like five years, six years, you have to also take permission from the child. John, shall I see your chest? Please, I'll not hurt you. Okay. Be sure I'll not hurt you. Okay, you are a good boy, very good. So these things you have to tell the child to make the rapport and to gain the confidence of the child that you are not going to hurt him. Okay, so this is the primary thing before starting any clinical examination like neuro, like cardiovascular or respiratory. You have to follow this wiper rule. So first of all, wash your hand, introduce yourself, take permission, expose the child at the same time, make some rapport with the child. And then when you starting your ex examination, before touching the child, you have to do some general e examination. What is the general examination? Now there is also a menomic, a very short technique for general examination. That is the 6D and S and P. So this is our general examination technique. For any station, any child, this is the 6D, S, and P, okay? What is 6D, S, P? 6D is for, let me draw for you. Here, 1D is for distress. Is the child is in any distress, like respiratory distress, or the child is cyanosed, or the child having some a fever or the child is in painful condition in antalgic gait or the child is having vertigo okay nystagmus he cannot see the blind child these are distress okay so among the 6d 1d is for distress 
So the distress, you have to demonstrate the examiner that the, the child is not looking well. Usually in our clinical exam, we will not be given any distressed child. We will be given a chronic condition, not an acute condition, like any respiratory distress child will not be presented in the exam hall usually, but unexpected things can happen. So first D is the distress. This is one D. Another D is the dimension. What do you mean by dimension? Look at the child. How you feel? Is the child short stature or tall stature or the child having obesity or the child having some uh, hypertrophy? So this is the dimension. Another D we will say this is dimension. Another D we will say that is devised. Is there any device attached? What are those, those devices? Suppose any child can have a nasal catheter for oxygen. This is a device. Any child can have IV cannulation at the hands. This is also a device. Okay. Any child is wearing spectacles. This is also a device. Okay. So this is another D is device. Now some clinical station, the child will be given a neurodevelopmental delay child. So in my examination, though it is a cardiovascular station or though it is a respiratory station, but the child is neurodisable. In that case, I have to tell the examiner that at the lastly, I have to tell that the child seems developmentally delayed. So I want to do detailed neurological examination, but this you will not do in this station because this is not a developmental station. You will just tell, verbalize that I can feel, I can see the child, it is a delayed child because Down syndrome child can be given in a, in a cardiovascular station or gastrointestinal station. So you have to say that this child, I seem it is a neurodevelopmental delay child. So I want to do detailed examination. Another is any dysmorphism. The child can have a syndrome like Down syndrome. So look for the dysmorphism of the child. You have to tell that that child seems dysmorphic. So I want to do detailed clinical examination to look other system involved. Because I know in a Down syndrome child, we have cardiovascular problem, gastrointestinal problem, ophthalmological problem, neurological problem, musculoskeletal problem. So I have to do full detailed clinical examination in this child. Now distress, dimension, device, development, and dysmorphism. What is another D? Let us see what is another D. So there are menomic for six D, S, and P. One D, as I told, it is distress. Another is dimension. Another is uh, dysmorphology. Another is neurodevelopmental delay. Okay. Another is there is any device attached or the child is having any dysmorphism. Okay. Let us see another one. So distress, dimension, device, developmental, dysmorphism, and there will be some delay in the examination of the child, okay? So these are the six D, delay, delay in any examination. So distress, dimension, device, development, and dysmorphism. Now what is six DSP? Now this S means surrounding, okay? So surrounding, what is surrounding? Okay, there is, there may be a foot orthosis, there may be a nebulizer machine, or there may be an inhaler. This is surrounding. Another is P. What is P? P for pubertal assessment. Now this pubertal assessment may not be uh, your task in the examination, but you have to say the examiner that this child seems a delayed puberty or this child seems a precocious puberty. So I like to do full pubertal assessment, but mostly the examiner will tell you, okay, proceed your proceed your examination because puberty, usually the private parts, we will not be given in the exam hall. So these are six DSP for any general observation of the child. Now, this is same thing RCPCH has told you that is general observation of the child, well or unwell child, dysmorphic child, then growth and nutrition, that is a dimension, development and 
during general examination, you have to see the hands, like is there any clubbing or nail color, or there's perfusion problem, or face, is there any craniosynostosis, or there is craniofacial problem, the child looks dehydrated, color of the child, cyanosis, anemia, and jaundice, and look for the general observation, like there may be widespread eczema, there may be an azogastric tube, there may be an intravenous infusion site on the hand. So this is the general ob observation. So during starting of any station, we have to follow this wiper. As we all know, there is wiper and there is 6D, S and P. So before any station, clinical exam, or in CVS or neurology, we have to follow this rule, 6, D, S, and P, okay? So I hope this video was a little bit helpful for you. I'm preparing for the next video that is a respiratory station. I'll upload soon the respiratory station. Since then, stay tuned, enjoy your study, goodbye.